Welcome to another video. This is a question from the International Mathematics Olympiad from 1961. You have ABC are the sides of a triangle and T is the area of the triangle. You're supposed to prove that A squared plus B squared plus C squared is greater than 4 rad 3 times T. And the second part of the question is when does equality hold? So you might say it's greater than or equal to, but when are you certain that it is exactly equal to? Let's get into the video. The first thing you want to focus on is the set of formulas you have for computing the area of a triangle because I see rat 3 here and I know that the formula I know for computing the area of a triangle has nothing to do with radicals so it's not half base times height that they're talking about unless while I'm doing this computation I would come across it but straight away my mind went to trigonometry because that's only when I have rad 3. So it prompted me to start thinking, okay, if I want to find the area of any triangle, I could say it is half AB sine theta, where theta is the angle between the two sides. So that's the advantage of having this rad 3, although it became a problem at the end for me. So let's go. Let's say T is equal to 1 half, AB sine theta, where theta is the angle between the two sides AB. Okay, which typically we use AB, so there's a third side C. Okay, maybe I should make a sketch of a triangle somewhere here. I'm gonna erase it later. So we have this. So let's call this A, call this B, call this C. Okay. If we look back at the formula we have and consider what we have here as a triangle, the biggest value we can get from sine theta is one, and the smallest value you can get from sine theta is gonna be, well, we're not doing negative one because all the angles of a triangle are between zero and 180 degrees. And in that case, sine is positive, remember. So the smallest you can get will be zero. The biggest you get is going to be one. So when you try to compute the area of any triangle using this formula, well, we know the area of a triangle has to be between zero and the maximum it can be. It cannot even be zero unless it's a degenerate triangle, but we're not dealing with that here. Okay. So we're going to say that zero is less than or equal to the area and the area is less than or equal to because this is going to be 0 times AB times half AB or 1 times half AB. So it's going to be 1 half of AB. So this is what we have. And because I said we're not doing degenerate tri triangles anyway, except in that special case where I mentioned it in that previous video, we're just going to strictly say 0 is less than T. So this is what happens every time you compute the area of a triangle. So. What can we do here? Don't forget that the, the mission is to find a squared plus b squared plus c squared being greater than 4 rad 3 times t. And we've gotten a representation for t, okay? We know that t is a positive value, which is area, and it is less than or equal to this. And it's beginning to look like what we have. It's just that this equality sign is, uh, oh, when we switch t here, it's going to make sense right? I'm going to switch it just to make it make sense. So I'm going to say, if we focus on this, just this side, what we have is going to be half AB will be greater than or equal to T. You see, we can now just start adding stuff that we want to add. So let's think about it. This is where we're going. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. This implies that AB is greater than or equal to 2T. Okay. It still does not look like this. 
In fact, what we have here is AB, what I'm looking for is A squared plus B squared plus C squared. But there's something about this. The maximum value of T, which is the area, is always half AB. And you notice that this is the formula for finding the area of a triangle if it is a right triangle. And it matches all the profile we've been talking about because the maximum you can get here is when theta is 90 degrees. Okay? So we know that it is true that half base times height is the area of a triangle if the angle is 90 degrees. And at that point, we can start seeing something that looks like the Pythagorean identity or theorem. So, I am going to now take the special case of the biggest area we can ever get, which is when the angle is 90 degrees. So, when theta equals 90 degrees, T is equal to half AB. That's what we have here. We know this is true. And at that point, the Pythagorean theorem can be applied. Here, applies. So we're going to switch this into a right triangle and clearly from here I have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. The c squared has just shown up because we're dealing with this. Remember we're supposed to prove that this is greater than this. Right now what we have is AB is greater than or equal to 2T. Now we're going to try to change this AB to look like this. That's the only thing that we need to do now. And I'm beginning to see it. Because A squared plus B squared equals C squared implies, what this means is that A squared plus B squared plus C squared will be equal to A squared plus B squared plus, instead of writing c squared, I'm going to write a squared plus b squared, which will be equal to 2a squared plus b squared. That's it. I, okay, I've seen the answer now. Because once you can write a squared plus b squared in the form of ab, we have created a connection between this and this. So don't forget that this is now equal to this. So we have a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals 2 times a squared plus b squared. This is a key. We're going to come back to this. At this point, what I'm looking to get is a way to write a squared plus B squared because that's the connection I need. I want to write it in terms of AB because if I can write this in terms of AB then I have a representation with T and I can just put it here and I have my inequality. Uh oh, this is not equal to. This is supposed to be greater than or equal to. That was an error. That was an error. Yeah, okay. So, how do you generate AB in terms of A squared plus B squared? Okay, now this is from algebra, ninth grade algebra. Okay, we know that A plus B squared, if we square this, is going to be A squared plus B squared plus 2AB. Now, from here, if I try to isolate AB from here, I'll have to move this over here, and then I'm going to have this minus this. I don't want this to have a minus in front of it. I want it to have a plus in front of it. 
because I don't know what to do with this and I cannot get rid of this. So let's use the other alternative, which is A minus B squared. You're gonna see why this is a better option because I tried this first, it didn't work. It's gonna be A squared plus B squared minus two AB. Now, from here, if I try to isolate two AB, I have two AB will be equal to, so I bring this here and I move this over, it's gonna be A squared plus B squared minus, right, minus A minus B squared. 2AB is equal to this. That means I can actually replace AB here. Because if I multiply this by 2 and multiply this by 2, I can actually say 2AB is greater than or equal to 4T. And I also said 2AB is equal to this. So which means this is greater than 4T. So I really didn't need this guy here. Huh, it's beginning to look juicy. <laughs> Just watch what's gonna happen. So what I have is a squared, so let's, let's, um, this is not important, okay? We don't need this guy. But comp using these two, I know that because this is equal to this, I can bring this to replace here. A squared plus B squared minus A minus B squared is greater than or equal to 4T. And my answer is almost showing up because I know something about a minus b squared. Is this a positive or a negative? This is always positive because it's a square. So remember, whenever, look at this, six minus two is, if you say it's greater than or equal to x, let's put it this way. If you say this is greater than or equal to x because you're subtracting a positive number from six, and you're saying it is greater than, it means even when you ignore this positive number, this is still greater than this. So, because this two is a positive number and you're subtracting it from a number, then it means this number itself is greater than this. So because I am subtracting this, you see that? Because I am subtracting a positive expression from a squared from b squared, I can easily claim that a squared plus b squared is greater than 4t. So since a minus b squared is greater than or equal to zero, we can conclude that a squared plus b squared is greater than or equal to 4t. But what we're looking for is not a squared plus b squared, we already established that a squared plus b squared, when you multiply it by two, gives us this, which is what we need. So we're gonna multiply both sides by two, so that we have two, let's write two, a squared plus b squared, ah, come on, is greater than or equal to eight t. And we know that this is this, so we have a squared, plus b squared plus c squared is greater than or equal to 8t. If we know that this is greater than or equal to 8t, we just need to know whether this 8 is greater than this number. Is 8 greater than 4 rad 3? That one, I almost got shocked at the end. I went, oh no, I just wasted my time. But it's true because, look, 8 has to be greater than 4 rad 3. Do you know why? If I square both sides, this is going to be 64. If I square this, this is going to be 16 times 3, which is 48. 64 is greater than 48, 
So eight is greater than four rad three. Even if I don't know what rad three is, I know it's 1.732, but the multiplication I couldn't do in my head because I'm not that um, great when it comes to calculating numbers. <laughs> so, but I know. So if this is greater than 8t, it is definitely greater than 4 rad 3. So I kept wondering, why did they give me rad 3? But I noticed that that was what prompted me to use this formula for area. And therefore, a squared plus b squared plus c squared is greater than or equal to 4 rad 3t. We've done this one. Check. The second part says, you know we're using greater than or equal to. When will they be equal? If you remember the analogy I made, 6 minus 2 is greater than or equal to x means that 6 is greater than x. But the only time the two will be equal is if you're not subtracting anything. Then you don't need to say greater than or equal to. Then 6 will be strictly equal to because you're not subtracting anything. So when this is 0, then these two will be equal. And the only reason they will be equal is because this is 0 and this is only 0 when A is equal to B. Yeah. And that's it. The only time this is going to happen is when A is equal to B. And that's the second part of this problem. When? a minus b squared equals 0, which implies a is equal to b. We're done. Leave a comment in the comment section. If I left anything I did not verify or prove, let me know. But I, I said it. Maybe I didn't say it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.